Hey everyone, it is May 22nd, 2019. Time is about 7.47 a.m. CDT. It's 57 degrees Fahrenheit out. And it is GeoRant time number 104. And today I, I'm going to talk briefly about our something we did when we went up to Canada on the North Shore. And then I'm going to show video afterwards of my field footage while we found it. As some of you know, I collect Uper lights. I, when we're up in the UP by the cabin, I'll go on the beach, the UV light, and I'll sit there and I'll look for them. But um, I actually found some of the source rock. All right. And this is, it was collected. This is my sample. This is my sample I'm going to display. As you can see, the rock looks like typical Uper lighting since it's very angular and coarse because I pulled it from the source. It's not rounded because it hasn't been transported. But this is what I'll have on display. Now the thing with this stuff is um, I have looked at it in detail and classified it and it's kind of weird what it came up as. But before I get into that, the thing about this is um, this is the Uper lights, the most common ones where you'll see, you'll hit it with the UV and you'll see spots like that fluoresce bright orange, but the whole thing isn't fiery orange. So this is one of the sources. This isn't the main source. There's got to be several sources. And what was really weird about this source is that this source was in veins inside of a more mafic, more mafic, but not mafic, host rock that actually had quartz in it. This has no quartz in it because it has Nephilim and sodalite in it and those are foids you can't have quartz and foids formed together so these veins came in later and you're going to see that in the video here when i get done but the the odd thing is this classifies as a foid diorite on the uh fap diagram because remember using the bottom of the qapf diagram because we have foids and I thought that was kind of weird. Now, some of the now what I thought in here might be plagioclase because there are striations on some of this plagioclase in here, and it's clear as day, but they're very faint, and some are very hard to pick out. So it's quite possible there might be more alkali feldspar in here than I think, and there's really no way for me to differentiate that with the, how poor the striations are developed. I'll have to look at more uperlite rocks to determine that, and uh, we'll have to eventually go back up there. But see, as you can see, oh, the black is hornblende mostly. There's 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 uh, some pyroxene in there too, but that's just basically. Uh, let's try to let's try to get you in zoomed in there. Now I'm I'm going to show you the video here of me in the field. It was right on Trans Canada 17. I'm not going to give you an exact location. Um, I may disclose that in the future at some point, but not here. And uh, so let's just watch the video, and I hope you learn something. Okay, it is May 6, 2019. We are in Trans Canada 17. I'm not going to disclose my exact location. My, but my hypothesis about where to find the source of the Uperlites looks to be correct. Sorry, the sun's right in my eyes. However, it's not like I thought it was. We've been going up and down. This host rock here does not fluoresce. I can see quartz in it. We're not done doing this. This is our first score, first source. But if you look at these veins here that cross cut this darker host rock, which is darker when wet, it's in this. But it's only a little bit of soda light. It's, it's only a tiny little bit. It's the typical Uper light looking rock that you would find along a beach in the Upper Peninsula, but we're in Canada. Um, so it's just a little bit here. The fiery, fiery orange takes up the whole rock we haven't found that source yet but we did find something like i said it's just in these veins and maybe if i'm feeling generous i'll give an exact location sometime in the future but it's not really worth it i mean it's hard to get it out 